Goats can be rewarding, but sometimes they can be very aggravating too. By far the worst moment for me in this whole goat fiasco was when little Clyde slipped under the barbed wire fence here and went off onto the neighbor's property. Hello Clyde, how you doing? We've had a few weeks of rainy weather, but today was nice and dry, so I took advantage of it. Blue, don't eat my jacket. That's not nice. So I took advantage of the dry weather to rebuild our Bucks feeding station. You might remember that plastic roof that I started with was slowly being torn to pieces by our goats. Well, I needed a dry weather day so I could rebuild it without letting our goat's hay get wet while I was doing that. This morning was ridiculous. Most of our goats escaped. I didn't get any of it on video. And Wendy happened to be taking a shower at the time, so it was just me out here dealing with it. Normally, when I go in and out of the gate, I try to do it quickly so the goats stay put. In this case, I was trying to get the feed station out. And I was halfway there when our entire herd decided to storm out to freedom. You have to imagine this. The gate is wide open, and I'm trying to carry the feed station out the gate, when suddenly I'm holding back one of the goats. And then I'm holding back three of the goats at the same time, and I'm just absolutely stuck. There's no way I can possibly keep holding these goats in the pen and still be able to get this feeding station out far enough to then close the gate behind me. I just had to let the goats go and trust that I'd be able to catch them later. Our goats don't usually run off too far, but I really don't want them eating our flowers and ferns out here. So one by one, I'd grab them and very firmly shuffle them back into their pen. Little Clyde was the last and the hardest one to catch. He was just really enjoying his game of run away from Brian. I finally was able to get him by using a partial scoop of grain to entice him back in. It was particularly concerning when little Clyde jumped up into this wheelbarrow planter. Right now we're using it as an evergreen tree nursery. And these little seedlings do not take kindly to goat nibbles or being trampled. Looks like most of them pulled through all right. By far the worst moment for me in this whole goat fiasco was when little Clyde slipped under the barbed wire fence here and went off onto the neighbor's property. Clyde is small enough that he fit under there and he wasn't gonna be hurt by the barbed wire. It's just if he had decided to stay over there, 
I would have been extremely hard pressed to try and catch him and then carry him over this barbed wire fence back to our side. I ended up just walking away for a bit. Clyde figured out that he wasn't getting any extra attention being over there and all the other goats were over on our side. So he just came right back under the barbed wire on his own. The new feeding station is identical to the one that I built for our does. If you're interested in how I built it, you can check out the other videos that I posted about the construction. As you can see, I've reused the 2x4s for the stand. Basically, I just had to take it apart, cut it down a little smaller, put it back together again, and build a completely new roof. It's a surprising... That plane is a little close. It's kind of a surprising contrast between the muddy stand part and the brand new plywood top. My guess is that this top won't stay looking pristine for very long. Not with these little troublemakers. No. It's good to get a little bit of help if you're going to have the goat gate open for any length of time. To get the goat feeding station back inside, we waited until evening when our goats normally have their grain treat time. Wendy distracted them on one end with a scoop of grain, and I had plenty of time to maneuver that structure inside and close the gate behind me. Mm -hmm. 